things are changing. And there's kind of a chess game being played in this area because when they decided Roe v. Wade, there was no ability to know anything about that fetus really inside. They did not know, for instance, that that fetus would, would feel pain and would pull away from a painful stimulus. They had no idea. They didn't even know when the heartbeat started. Um, they didn't know so much about that. The world has changed a lot, and I, and there is, there is a chess game movement underway to try to force a circuit, it's called a circuit split, to get different federal circuit courts of appeal to make contrary decisions and force the matter back in front of the Supreme Court. They've been dodging it for years, and when they've had it, they've made, when they've had abortion-related cases in front of them, they have made very narrow decisions. And at some point, we may see it open up. Um, this is one of the reasons why uh, President Trump's election was so critical. Mm -hmm. Because whether he's here for four years or eight, um, and all their talk about impeaching him, that's all garbage. They don't even mean it, because yeah. seriously, they know if they impeach President Trump, who are they getting for the president? <laughs> Mike Pence? <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, you want to talk about a, a true blue, dyed in the wool conservative mm -hmm. with a heck of a backbone. There's no, they have no question about that Mike Pence would do uh, the liberals a lot of harm as president. So I don't, uh, they're not serious about it. but. Whether the president's here for four or eight years, um, he has been accomplishing a remarkable number of nominations and now they're clearing appointments. The Senate's finally starting to just clear them. They've gotten rid of the blue slip rule or they're just ignoring it. Um, and they are clear, they're finally getting these done. We finally have our Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals uh, back up to full speed. It hasn't been in a decade. Um, Right. So Mike Brennan was the Wisconsin was a Wisconsin uh, appointee to that court, and she uh, she withheld her blue slip. So that that's supposed to be a veto power. That's a Senate rule. That's not in the Constitution. That's not even in the statutes. And frankly, the Senate can just change their own rules. And it's about time they did to get that court back up to speed. And along with other courts, he's got he actually. Um, he actually broke the record for the number of judicial nominees that he put forward in his first year in office. And they are all people that go right down the checklist of the Federalist Society. And the Federalist Society will get, the, the liberals will run around and scream about the Federalist Society. They're not looking to appoint judges who will rule a certain way on a policy. The Federalist Society supports judges who will respect the constitutional separation of powers. The legislature is going to pass the law. They want, they want the judges to not interfere. And they, the federal society can't control what laws the legislature is passing. They're just wait, they just want judges that give us the certainty of under, of knowing that once that is signed into law by the executive branch, this is the law of the land, and the court's not going to interfere. A great example of when the court did. Um, th this is an interesting dilemma, because when you look at the 2012 decision on Obamacare, <coughs> Chief Justice Roberts sided with the four liberal judges on the court and therefore upheld Obamacare. You may remember how he did it. He concluded that the individual mandate that says you must buy insurance, the individual mandate is illegal. It's unconstitutional because while the government may regulate commerce, the government may not force you to buy things. So he said, that's a, that's a problem. Individual mandate would fail. However, because there's a tax penalty associated with the individual mandate, he said, well, that's just really the government generating revenue, which they are, we all know, they are permitted to tax us and generate revenue. That's what, so he compacted the two together and made this strange legal contortion that I think, frankly, I think surprised everybody. 
conservatives were shocked. I think the liberals quietly were shocked. They didn't admit it, but they were shocked too because that's that's really straining. I think I think ultimately Justice Roberts was taking his position as a conservative jurist so seriously that at any cost avoid undoing what the legislature does. Well now Wisconsin is leading the uh, the current lawsuit against Obamacare. We filed it back in uh, uh, March 1st, I think was the date we filed it, maybe right around then. But anyway, we filed the lawsuit. We joined, we brought Texas in with us, partially because I have five attorneys in my Solicitor General's division. He has 35 in his, so they got, they've got more lawyers to work on stuff, so we brought them in to help, but also gave us the chance to file in the Northern District of Texas. And that's a much better federal district based on the makeup of the judges than there was two districts in Wisconsin. And actually by luck of the draw, we got the same judge who struck down Obamacare in 2011. Of course the Supreme Court overturned that, but we got, it was just luck of the draw, we got that same judge. So we feel good that we're gonna get injunctive relief because here's our legal theory. The individual mandate, still no good by itself but the tax penalty protected it. Well now, in the Tax Reform Act that President Trump signed earlier this year, the Congress got rid of the tax penalty. The individual mandate is still there, but it's protective cocoon, the, the tax penalty is gone. So now we have the individual mandate standing out there all by itself with its pants down around its ankles. Um, it's done. And the legal experts looking at this are, yeah, we think, we think they've got them this time. And, and Chief Justice Roberts will not have to change his position on anything because his prior decision was based on the tax penalty being there. All he has to do now is say, hey, legislature changed their mind and now Obamacare is illegal. Um, we, well, it's always been illegal, but now we're gonna, I, we're gonna win. The problem is we're not gonna get through the lower court. We might jump right from the Court of Appeals to the Supreme Court because this is so significant, but we're not gonna get there. We would, but the earliest we could look at getting a decision is this time next year. Well, what are you all gonna be doing in October? You're gonna be making your health care options and the tax penalty rescission doesn't go into effect till the first of the year, but there's gonna be tremendous confusion. And um, therefore, we've moved for injunctive relief. We've asked the federal court to issue an injunction stopping uh, Obamacare from being further implemented. That's the decision that's probably gonna cause everything to go nuclear. Um, whoever loses that is going to immediately appeal and we might be able to get an appeal right. It might be an appeal right to the Supreme Court because no court of appeals is gonna go undo the Supreme Court decision, I, I think, um, on something this big. Uh, 